I, I also recognize the importance of the matters your committee is investigating. Struggling to break free of its past. Ambassador Taylor, in your decades of military service and, and diplomatic service representing the United States around the world, have you ever seen another example of foreign aid conditioned on the personal or political interests of the President of the United States? No, Mr. Goldman, I've not. Mr. Kent, that vital military assistance that was not the only thing that President Trump was withholding from Ukraine, what else was contingent on Ukraine initiating these investigations? Well, as we've talked earlier today, uh, the possibility of a White House meeting was being held contingent to an announcement. How important to President Zelensky was a White House meeting? New leaders, particularly countries that uh, are trying to uh, re ha have good footing in the international arena, uh, see a meeting with the U.S. President in the Oval Office at the White House as, a, as the ultimate sign of endorsement and support from the United States. And president Zelensky was a relatively new president, is that right? That's correct. He was elected on April 21st, and his government uh, was formed after parliamentary elections in July. Would a White House meeting for President Zelensky boost his legitimacy as a new president in Ukraine? It would primarily boost his leverage to negotiate with Vladimir Putin about the Russian occupation of 7% of Ukrainian territory. Mr. Ken, is, is pressuring Ukraine to conduct what I believe you've called political investigations a part of U.S. foreign policy to promote the rule of law in Ukraine and around the world? It is not. Is it in the national interest of the United States? In my opinion, it is not. Why not? Because our policies, uh, particularly in promoting the rule of law, are designed to help countries, and in Eastern uh, Europe and Central Europe, uh, that is overcoming the legacy of communism. In the communist system, in particular, the prosecutor general office was used to uh, suppress and persecute citizens, not promote the rule of law. So in helping these countries reach their own aspirations to join the Western community of nations and live lives of dignity, helping them have the rule of law with strong institutions is the purpose of our policy. So in other words, it is a purpose of our foreign policy to encourage foreign nations to refrain from conducting political investigations, is that right? Correct, and in fact, as a matter of policy, not of programming, uh, we oftentimes raise our concerns, usually in private, with countries that we feel are engaged in selective political prosecution and persecution of their opponents. Oh, but if, the pres if President Zelensky did not clear things up, he now saying that security assistance and White House meeting are conditioned on investigations. I had learned that uh, in Warsaw, um, after the meeting Vice President Pence had with President Zelensky, uh, Ambassador Sondland had had meetings there and had described uh, two Mr. Yermak, the assistant to President Zelensky, um, that the security assistance was also held uh, pending announcement uh, by President Zelensky in public of these investigations. Before that, I had only understood uh, from Ambassador Sondland that the White House meeting was conditioned. And at this time, after I heard of, uh, of this conversation, uh, it struck me, it was clear to me that security assistance was also being held. You said previously that you were alarmed to learn this. Why were you alarmed? It's one thing to try to leverage a meeting in the White House. It's another thing, I thought, um, to leverage security assistance, security assistance to a country at war, um, dependent on both the security assistance and the demonstration of support. It was 
it was much more alarming. The, the, the White House meeting was one thing, security assistance was much more alarming. We've talked a little bit about the fact that you continually heard that the president uh, was repeatedly saying that there was no quid pro quo, is that right? That's correct. And he, he still says that repeatedly today, but regardless of what you call it, whether it's a quid pro quo, bribery, extortion, abuse of power of the office of the presidency, the fact of the matter, as you understood it, is that security assistance and the White House meeting were not going to be provided unless Ukraine initiated these two investigations that would benefit Donald Trump's reelection. Is that what you understood the facts to be? Mr. Goldman, what, what I can do um, here for you today is tell you what I heard from people. And in this case, it was what I heard from Ambassador Sondland. Um, he described conditions for the security assistance and the White House meeting in, in those terms. That is, that was dependent upon, conditioned on, um, pursuing these investigations. And you heard that from Ambassador Sondland himself, correct? Correct. And you also heard a similar story from Mr. Morrison as well, is that right? Who also talked uh, to Ambassador Sondland um, about the conversations that he had had in Warsaw with Ukrainians. Regardless of what Ukrainians may say now, now that everything is out in the public and we're here in this public hearing, that they felt no pressure from President Trump, it was your clear understanding, was it not, that in early September, when the pressure campaign was still secret, that the Ukrainians believed that they needed to announce these public investigations. Is that right? Ms. Goldman, I know that the Ukrainians were very concerned about the security assistance. And I know that they were prepared or preparing um, to, do, to make a public statement, that is, with a CNN interview, that they, that was being planned. Those are the two pieces that I know. And that CNN interview was to announce these investigations as you understood it, right? That was the implication. That was certainly the implication. Russia invaded the United States ally, Ukraine. 